So in this video, I'm going to cover um, induced pluripotent stem cells, IPSC. Um, basically, this was the landmark article where they first uh, demonstrated that you could take uh, skin cells from an adult human, uh, transfect them with uh, some uh, DNA. I will talk about that a little bit later, what that means. But basically, induce them to become identical by every test to embryonic stem cells. So <clears throat> at this point, there are uh, four ways of doing that. One is uh, using a virus to insert some of that DNA. Another is to uh, uh, basically just use other methods. We're not going to get too deep into that right now. Uh, but what is that process where you insert the uh, DNA? It's called transfection. Transfection is the process of uh, introducing foreign DNA into cells or, uh, either by physical um, or chemical or other means, viral means, etc. <clears throat> So here's the article. It was done by a couple of researchers in Japan, um, a Dr. Takahashi in um, stem cell biology at Kyoto University, uh, Drs. Tanabe and Onuku were from, and Noriko, Narita were from there as well. There was one American from uh, Gladstone Institute in San Francisco. Uh, that was Dr. Tomoto, um, so all uh, evidently Japanese. This was a landmark article. Over 15,000 citations. These guys were, uh, in this space, a lot more than rock stars. They're like super-duper rock stars. Um, <clears throat> here's a, a couple of other points about it. This was published in Cell magazine that is uh, maybe the foremost magazine in the world in this area. Um, it was back in 2007. So here's a couple of things that, just a couple of other comments about this, um, this study. But first, a brief introduction. My name is Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D, Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R. Um, <clears throat> I started off as an ER doc, got very motivated, given my experience in the ER, with all of the preventable death, disease, and disability that ER patients bring into the ER to go into prevention. I uh, went to uh, Hopkins to learn, um, learn prevention, ended up running the program there, and, and basically for the 30 plus years since then, I've been working mostly with primary care docs uh, and with patients. Um, teaching and uh, promoting uh, prevention. This uh, channel is the science of prevention. It's uh, making information that's coming out regarding um, uh, the science of prevention. And in uh, this case, stuff that came out a few years ago, classics in terms of uh, preventive medicine. Now, what's stem cell got to do with preventive medicine? Well, it uh, many people would call that restorative medicine. Basically, what we're doing is fighting disease, death, disability. Um, <clears throat> I have a, a personal interest in uh, genetics. I uh, got about halfway through a, um, a distance course in genetics at Stanford and then got sucked into uh, some of my other activities and like many people in these uh, distance courses, didn't complete it. But um, I got a lot of courses done in it. Still have a very big interest in um, DNA, RNA, all of the epigenetics, all of the things associated with uh, genetics. So again, just a couple of other things. Big, big journal, huge article, um, landmark, Again, what they did was prove that you can get a uh, induce a pluripotent stem cell from um, human skin. Let's just go over some of the basics. Um, obviously, the impact on this would be huge. Uh, 
it's patient specific, disease specific. They demonstrated for the first time that you can do this with human adult dermal fibroblasts. That's connective tissue cells within the skin. Um, they used four factors, uh, OCT3-4, SOX2, KIF4, and CMYC. Those are just uh, items that they use. Let me show you in this. Um, this is where they took the fibroblast, and these are the techniques that they were using to insert these um, DNA, RNA genetic components into the, that stem cell so that stem cell would reverse its differentiation and could replicate itself. Um, <clears throat> now, as you see, there are other method, methods for doing it. Uh, viral methods, um, DNA, DNA based in inductions, uh, recombinant uh, methods as well. Now, <clears throat> human IP, uh, induced plur, uh, pluripotent stem cells were similar to embryonic stem cells. Uh, how do they know? Well, they did all the tests that we do on stem cells when we're culturing and going through different generations of stem cell um, to see if they are still stem cells. You look at morphology, which is what they look like on the, in the microscope. Pro proliferation, the ability to uh, replicate, which is what makes a stem cell a stem cell. Surface antigens. There are antigens on the surface of the cells that uh, are linked with being stem cells. Um, <clears throat> gene expression. Epigenetic status of pluripotent stem cell genes. Telomerase activities. Uh, for, furthermore, these cells could differentiate into cell types in three layers. So they had all of the testing uh, morphology, antigens, everything else that would indicate that these are, yes, still stem cells and pluripotent, not just, uh, not just pro uh, progenitor cells, but like the very best, most uh, potent, most flexible type of stem cell. Then they go on to replicate uh, further generations of these cells. Uh, to show the same things. And again, these findings demonstrate that you can uh, induce human skin cells to become very similar to embryonic skin cells and to um, act just like them. Now, <clears throat> uh, very interesting, major development. What are we gonna do with that? Uh, those are all really big questions that are bigger than this video. Thank you.